Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for joining us today at the Global AI Conclave. Uh, welcome, Girish. Let's Thank just you. straight away dive in. Thank you. you know, as we move further into the era of generative AI-driven solutions, how do you envision the future of digital technology uh, transforming, evolving? What major trends do you feel you know, will shape the way businesses leverage technology in the coming years? Okay, uh, uh, before we start, Shruti, I'd just like yeah. to say that it's a tough act to follow. Hmm. Secretary Krishna and Shireen Khan, that was an amazing conversation. Yeah. But anyway, so, so let's, let's dive in and see what we can do with this. Hmm. So look, um, generative AI, AI in, in general and generative AI in particular is, is a reality now, right? And your tagline says it best, from hype to impact. Uh, and, 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 and this is reflected in the conversations that we have with our customers and partners globally. The conversations have moved from potential to performance, from, from playground to production, if you will, yeah. right? And, and the pace and volume of AI-led innovations are just skyrocketing. Due to radical breakthroughs in, in chip technology, we heard, we heard yes. that in some of those conversations in cloud computing, interfaces have changed, and the way in which we interact with applications and search engines have changed forever, right? So, so all of this is actually playing a big role. Now, if, if you look at it in from, a, from, a, from a generative AI standpoint, what it also does in the Indian context is that there is this huge, uh, the rapidly rising middle class in India is driving a huge surge in consumption, right? Which is actually reflecting in an unprecedented demand, increase in demand for digital content where again, there's a huge, huge play for generative AI. Now, the full value or the true potential of generative AI or AI will be realized only when it starts getting deeply embedded within the business workflows, right? Enhancing processes like content creation, uh, marketing, customer service, or, or data analysis, thereby enhancing what we call creativity and productivity, right? So businesses that integrate AI into their core applications actually can automate these manually intensive, repetitive tasks, drive quicker insights. And, and how do you see that happening? How soon? So we see that happening now. We see that happening now. Like I said, it's no more a conversation about potential benefits. It's all about conversation about performance. It's about conversation on production. So we see that happening right now as we speak across industries, across various company sizes, across India. All right. Uh, so you've taken us through the major trends that you know you see evolving and how businesses are going to leverage technology in the future. Uh, Girish, tell us how does Adobe's unique approach to generative AI uh, caters to the diverse needs of businesses across industries, and you know what sets it apart? Sure. So look, uh, the way we see it, Adobe is designed for every business, everywhere in digital India, from. Uh, you know, whether you, could be, uh, whether you are a small business owner to India's largest enterprises across industries from, from healthcare and life sciences to manufacturing to financial services or to entertainment, right? Adobe's creative cloud, document cloud solutions help unleash creativity, boost productivity and drive, help drive digital success. Now, Adobe's unique approach to Gen AI actually blends something very interesting. We call this innovation with integrity. Right, and based on four key pillars, which is all around data, models, interfaces, and all three underpinned by a huge focus on ethics. Right? Now, data, any AI model or any AI system or generative AI model, the output is only as good as the input you feed it. Right? The output is only as good as the data that you train it on. So from an Adobe standpoint, our unique approach is that our generative AI models, family of generative AI models called Firefly, is trained on Adobe's stock images, where contributors are paid for their work, right? It's Adobe's content, 350 million plus images, or openly licensed content, or publicly available content where copyright has expired. I just go back to the previous discussion between uh, yeah. you know, Secretary Krishnan and, and Shireen Ban, where they spoke about copyright infringement, right? This is exactly what is addressed by Adobe's approach from a, from a data standpoint, right? So this actually gives you output which is completely safe for commercial use. So, so give us a use case as to how you're helping your clients. So, so for example, we have, we have clients in, in, uh, you know, in, in healthcare and life sciences where you know, a company which is involved in clinical research and others are, are looking at creating content 
It's a heavily regulated industry, by the way, right? So they're looking at creating content where they do not have any issues from a legal standpoint. So what we even do is we go one step further and actually help them train our LLMs using their own data, okay. which is called custom models. So this data, the output and the input is completely controlled by them, which gives them supreme control over data privacy. And the outputs are completely aligned and consistent with their brand guidelines. And there is no legal issues or anything to be, to be worried about, right? And, and how, do we, how do we back it up? From an Adobe standpoint, for all our enterprise customers, we put our money where our mouth is in the sense that we actually provide what we call legal indemnification to our enterprise clients who are actually using our Gen AI solutions. Because we are supremely confident about the data that we use to train our systems on. So the output is something which is very, very heavily curated in the sense that there is no issues with respect to copyright infringement. All right. Okay, you know, you spoke about the five pillars which had ethics as well, and we'll yeah. get to that a little later. Yeah. But before that, you know, generative AI, as we all know, is opening new frontiers by democratizing sure. creativity. You spoke about that, and with Adobe, obviously, certainly setting benchmarks at that. How do you ensure that while driving efficiency, the soul of human creativity remains intact, and also at the same time addressing the fear of job placement? So um, uh, I would like to go to the previous session in the, you know, uh, when we had those chess grandmasters on stage. We heard, we heard one of the grandmasters talking about the fact that how much of our AI or how much of our technology is going to help you. At the end of the day in a math situation, it's a human emotions which count. Mm. It's a human quotient, yes. which is the X factor which is going to be the difference. Right? So we at Adobe truly believe that generative AI can be an augmentation, can augment human creativity but will never replace human creativity. It will be a co-pilot. It's not going to replace human creativity. Right? So, so we are firmly of the opinion that the, the human element, the human element, the human emotions, the creative quotient is something that will come to the fore from a, from a human. Right? So what generative AI will do is actually help you automate a lot of those workflows and other processes that are associated with the workflow so that that actually frees up the creator's time to focus on the core human element of ideation and creativity. Now, on the democratization part, uh, Shruti, you mentioned about democratizing yeah. creativity, and I think that's a very key element, and that's what I think is one of the biggest achievements from a generative AI standpoint, not just Adobe, across, across all, all, all uh, partners and vendors in this space. If you, look at, if you look at creativity in general, Adobe's view is that there has always been something what we call a creative ceiling, right? Because designers and creative professionals have always been told as how should a designer be, how should a designer work, how should a designer think, which in some sense would be constraining their creative elements, right? They're supposed to work in a certain way, they're supposed to work with certain tools, but and at the same time, what we see is that there has always been something what's called a creative floor, which should prevent, which should typically prevent a non-creative professional from participating in this creative process. You know, for example, I would like to classify myself as a knowledge worker. I'm not a creative person per se, I'm a knowledge worker. How would I participate in the creative process? Today, I create content. Almost every one of us in this room, whether you're a marketer or you're a knowledge worker. Absolutely, or writer, you, you each one content. of us. Yeah. And that is, that is the, you know, outcome of all this generative AI technology, where it has actually democratized creativity. And from an Adobe standpoint, our tools like Firefly, which is our flagship uh, generative AI uh, models, or Express, with very low learning curves, have actually put, opened up creativity, actually democratized, democratized it, and, and, and you know, made a lot of non-creatives participate in this creative process. So we call this raising the creative ceiling and lowering the floor so that many people can participate in this, in this so, process. So Girish, would you say you see generative AI as an enabler of human creativity, Absolutely. complementing talent, or as a disruptor that might redefine traditional roles? So it, it, is, it is going to be both. It's, it's going to complement in certain cases. It's going to be disrupting, and it so will redefine, redefine traditional roles. Absolutely. So like what we, uh, you know, all of us would have seen the Jensen Huang interview, right? Yeah. AI is not going to replace, uh, take away your job, but somebody who knows AI is probably going to take away your job. Right? So it's going to redefine, redefine right. that reality. Okay. Uh, you know, balancing rapid innovation with ethical practices is essential for organizations that are adopting uh, generative AI. How does Adobe champion this cause, the responsible use of artificial intelligence, help maintain the authenticity of digital content while enabling clients to harness the full potential of generative AI? Uh, like I said, we are super focused on what we call responsible use of AI. So mm -hmm. that's why 
we have uh, you know any any ai product that goes out of adobe's door any ai feature that gets embedded into our tool set actually goes through what we call an ai review framework so we even have something called an ai impact assessment where each of these features are actually reviewed for impact right now now before I elaborate further, I, I again go back to one of the points that Secretary uh, Krishnan mentioned, saying that innovation should never be stifled. Absolutely. Just because there are risks doesn't mean that you, you actually put a lid on innovation and creativity. We, we believe that the true potential of generative AI can be realized when you encourage innovation and creativity, but have the right guardrails in mm. place. Right From an Adobe standpoint, what this means is we have a very clear ethical framework in place, which is built on what we call an art framework, which is accountability, responsibility, and transparency. Right, so any AI feature that is embedded in our product goes through rigorous end-to-end -end review from you know, design to development to deployment before it gets released. And, and it goes through what we call an AI impact assessment. So if there is a feature which is termed as low impact, for example, it could just be an AI feature which is going to just work on some font. Adobe is very famous yeah. for fonts. It's just going to work on some font. It will be classified as low impact, so it will get cleared through the regular channel. Okay. If there is a feature which involves, for example, neural filters, or a feature which can potentially change human characteristics or help you define human characteristics, that is going to go through a rigorous test as part of the AI ethics framework and impact assessment to ensure that biases don't creep in. Gender biases, race biases, bunch mm. of other biases mm. don't creep in. So we've got a lot of these safeguards in place. And so, authenticity. And of course, authenticity is super important. And Adobe, uh, you know, we, we are one of the leaders here and we founded what we call the Content Authenticity Initiative. I don't know, many of you might have heard of what we call the CAI, Con Content Authenticity Initiative, which was founded five years back. And the participants here are typically what we see, you know, participants from media, we are partners from technology companies, and we have policymakers as well who are part of this consortium and which is now upwards of 4,000 members globally led by Adobe and this actually works to safeguard content authenticity and not just that it is now evolved into something more more than authenticity it's evolved into what we call provenance so it is now called C2PA which is coalition for content provenance and authenticity where provenance is super important as important as authenticity so what I mean is you have a piece of digital content you actually are able to look at its prominence in the sense that you are able to see the history of that content. When was this content created? Who created it? What tools or technologies, including AI or generative AI, were used to create this piece of content? And what happened to this content through its life cycle? And then a person can make an informed decision about whether they want to consume this content or not consume this content. Mm. That is super important. Think of it like a nutrition label for digital content. Yeah. What did you look for when you buy something to eat? Right? You look for the manufacturing date, you look for the expiry date, you see what percentage of protein, fat, and all of that. This actually gives you a nutrition label kind of a thing for a digital content, basis which the consumer can make an informed decision. Do they want to consume that content? Sure. Do they want to be part of it or not? All right, so thank you for taking us through how Adobe is championing the responsible use of AI. But what advice, Girish, would you give to uh, ensure that you know, your businesses uh, or leaders leverage this technology responsibly and effectively as part of the digital transformation journey? So, so uh, the, the way we see it is first, first look at, do not, do not look at AI or Gen AI as a threat or a challenge. This is not something which is going to take away jobs. Like you mm -hmm. rightly said, this is something which is going to probably redefine job profiles. Redefine roles, right? It's going yeah. to redefine job profiles. But this is something which is going to help us do a lot more. With, we can do a lot more with what we have today. It's not about reducing cost. From an India standpoint, it's always about doing a lot more with what you have today. So embrace it as an opportunity rather than look at it or, or deal with it as a challenge that you, that you have to anyway deal with, right? So yes. that's the way we look at it. All right. Take us through some of the key generative AI innovations that Adobe has introduced in recent years and the kind of impact it has had. So look, th there, have been, there have been many innovations. The, the rate at which this space is evolving, the kind of conversations that I have I had with customers one year back is very different from the conversation that I have today. Because the pace at which the portfolio is evolving is, is, is stupendous, right? It's mind-boggling. But if, if you had to pick a few things, uh, you know, uh, last month we announced from an Adobe Firefly, which is, which is Adobe's family of generative AI models, we announced what we call text to video. That means you can generate long format videos from text prompts, which again, completely designed to be commercially safe, right? Safe for work, right? 
and and again i go back to the point where where you know in the previous conversation they were talking about a news agency suing a technology company yeah. because they've used their com content to yes. train their llms that's like absolutely what for example adobe we just don't do at all so we ensure that our models are trained on our content so that the output is completely safe for business use for our for our customers now coming back to this so text to video is, is an amazing uh, you know innovation that we have launched uh, recently not just that there have been a lot of uh, uh, you know innovations launched in the space of 3d for example okay. right so we have a huge 3d portfolio where you can actually edit 3d files within 2d workflows and actually generate 3d content within that so plus plus a lot of uh, innovations around the document management portfolio hmm. i don't know if many of you have heard of acrobat ai assistant you know uh, acrobat ai assistant actually helps if you know if you are a knowledge worker or a business leader who has to make decisions and i think that's the biggest role of a leader make decisions right how do you make decisions by analyzing data and information and that's what something like an acrobat ai assistant can make your life so much simpler and make you so much more productive and efficient all right thank you for taking us through some of the recent innovations at adobe i believe we have about 3 to 4 minutes let me quickly throw away uh, three rapid questions at you and you need to be faster than the llms all right <laughs> okay girish first up what is your favorite gen ai tool and why nowadays it is acrobat ai assistant if you had asked me this question 6 months back i would have said firefly now it's acrobat ai assistant all right what is the one line that comes to your mind when you think about adobe's gen ai offerings uh we are on brand at scale okay commercially safe for business wow i i love the subtle uh, subtleness in that statement <laughs> everything uh finally what is that one superpower you would like ai to equip you with you really want to know that yes okay i just wish ai would help me to get my kids to listen to me <laughs> I have a 16 year old and a 10 year old if it, there's any way I can get them to listen to me yeah. that's a superpower that I long for Well I have twins and I would love to have that superpower yeah, as well If I get that I'll let you know All right <laughs> how, how soon can we do this <laughs> Are you I'm working still, on it I'm still searching for it <laughs> All right Girish on that note it's time for us to wrap up this conversation Many thanks ladies and thank gentlemen you. a huge round of applause for Girish thank you so much Thank you so much for your time and thank you for your time and patience